Before going on board the galley, he whispers near Jesus' ear, Claudia Procula is in there. She would like to hear you again. In the meantime, she wants to ask you something. Go and see her. A pause for a moment. Claudia Procula is the wife of Pontius Pilate. She is, although she's the wife, and that means she's subservient to Pontius Pilate in, a, in an absolute Roman sense, as he's the paterfamilias, as all, all Roman fathers are, Roman husbands, still, she's of the Claudia family, the Claudii family. And so that means she's powerful, as Jesus refers to subsequently, as I'll read shortly. And it may be the case that we could say she's more powerful than her husband, uh, in a way. But that's her, and she features quite a bit in this series of visions known as the Poem of the Man God. And of course, she's mentioned in the Gospels as, the, as Pilate's wife, who urges him to have nothing to do with this man. She's had a dream about Jesus, but Pilate brushes her off and permits the execution of Jesus anyway, even though he does try to release Jesus. We must say that it is the machinations of the Jews that cause Jesus to be crucified. We must not go along with this idea that liberal Catholics and liberal Protestants and those who want to, uh, who are so concerned with anti-Semitism that they go overboard. It was not that the Romans were equally responsible for the death of Christ as the Jews. No, 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 this was the chosen people choosing to reject God. The Romans are bit players in this. Like all Gentiles will be bit players. It was only once the rejection had happened and after Pentecost that the nations would come to the fore and be the new chosen people. The old chosen people having been rejected. And we know they were rejected because God himself destroyed Jerusalem and particularly the temple and caused the dispersion of the once chosen people. Thus showing to all the world that it's no use talking about a dual covenant theology whereby there's a, a covenant of the Hebrews and there's a covenant of the Christians. No, 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 there's one covenant, the New Testament. The Old Testament informs the New Testament. We can know much about the New Testament in all its detail from looking at the Old Covenant. And as St. Augustine, I think, said, the New Testament is hidden in the Old and the old is revealed in the new. But it's one covenant, one way to salvation, one Christ, and he's that way. But enough of that little excursion. Jesus has been asked by Publius to go to speak to Claudia Procula. Jesus goes towards a litter. Hail, Master. The curtain is drawn a little, showing a beautiful woman about 30 years old. May the desire for wisdom come upon you. You said that a soul remembers heaven. Therefore, that thing which you say we have within us, is it eternal? Yes, it is eternal. That is why it remembers God. It remembers the God who created it. What is the soul? The soul is the true nobility of man. You are famous because you belong to the Claudii family. A man is even more so because he belongs to God. In your veins, there is the blood of the Claudii, the mighty family, which however had a beginning and will come to an end. In man, because of his soul, there is the blood of God. Because a soul is the spiritual blood, as God is the most pure spirit, of the creator of man, of the eternal, almighty, holy God. Because of the soul, which is in him, and which is alive as long as it is united to God, man is eternal, powerful and holy. I am a pagan, so I have no soul. You do have it. 
but it has fallen into a state of lethargy. Wake it up to the truth and to life. Goodbye, Master. May justice conquer you. Goodbye.